Hey, what's up guys? This is Tony could have been um So let me explain why I haven't made a video since five days ago. Um when I made that uh the Kyrie Irving and uh, LeBron James rant that I had. Um this is a vlog entry, uh video vlog for those of you who don't know, if you've been living on the rock. Um This has been working. Working a lot. I look at myself right now on the camera, I feel like I look kinda tired, but um yeah, I just been uh working and um uh, just uh, trying to save money. So all we can do is just try to save money. It's a long story between my uh, transportation issue, my savings, saving money issues. Uh, my brother's birthday is coming up. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, I have an older brother and uh, he's two years older than me. But um, I think he made a real quick appearance in one of my past YouTube videos. But um, uh, so this is what happened at work. Just another gripe about retail. Um, uh, so um, it was a little bit busy, you know, like things were getting backed up because you know we're extremely understaffed for some reason. And um, uh, I'm ringing out a customer, right? And um, like the customer's right here, on where I am, and uh, someone from down there. Let me see if I can get this camera. Right. Yeah, someone from like down there, like way back in the back over there. Uh, my supervisor says. Tony, can you turn off your light and don't take any more customers because I need your help with something right away. So I was like, okay. So I turn off the light and I tell the rest of the people in line because this is what I, she told me to do. So I have to do it since technically she's my supervisor. She told me to, you know, take the lot the customers I already had as the last customer. And I explained to the rest of the customers in line, there were like two or three of them. Uh, some of them had a lot of stuff. The person ahead next only had one item. And uh, so, so this old dude, um, Caucasian male, take that how you want to take it, but um, he um, starts flipping out, and he says, uh, you know, you can't just tell us that when I'm, when there's already people in line. Well, he actually said when I'm next in line. So he wasn't really looking out for anyone else except himself, but which is understandable, I guess. I mean, um, so uh, he uh, takes his one item, which is a carton of orange juice. He takes it. He picks it up and slams it on the counter and says, ring me out, please. There's a, you notice how I said that with that pause between ring me out and please? Because I think after he demanded that I ring him out, I think he realized how douchebag like making that statement was and tried to correct it by being polite about it. Suddenly, all of a sudden being polite about it. And like, I explained to him, I mean, um, I don't know what you want me to tell you, sir, but you know, she's my supervisor. I have to do what she says. And um, so I go back to ring the current customer that I have, and you know, I'm, you know trying to ignore his ass. And um, uh, right when I'm, uh, I so I ring her out, give her a receipt and stuff. Um, uh, my light was off, but I decided to take him, you know, just because I I assess the situation. I was like, you know, I was to see if I could finish his transaction and uh, see if the other customers complain in the fashion, the childish fashion that he did. And, um, so he, um, as when I'm finishing ringing him out, he, the other supervisor who was also at the service desk, this was at the customer service desk, by the way. And, um, she tells me a different, she, she tells me, Tony, never mind about that. Just keep, just stay at the register. I was like, okay. So all I'm saying is everything worked out the way it was supposed to work out. And he, tr he tried to be cool about it. Because he definitely heard both what the, both the supervisors said to me, so he didn't cho choose to say anything until I brought it up to him, which is he could have easily have brought it up to my one of my supervisors. Maybe he didn't know they were my supervisors. I don't know, but um, so uh, he he says something like, "Sorry, I don't mean to take it out on you." When okay, so that statement right there kind of tells you that he's not really sorry because he did mean to take it out on me. That's why he spoke to me directly. I mean, I don't think that's crazy. I think that makes sense why this guy is not a good person, <laughs> possibly at that moment. I mean, maybe he's a good person outside of retail, but um, like a good customer, whatever you want to call it. So after he says, sorry, I, don't mean, I didn't mean to take it out on you. He, I said, I didn't look at him. I didn't address him. I just, under my breath, I said, it's fine. And 
he didn't want his receipt, so I just, you know, do what I normally do when customers don't want their receipts. I just throw it in the trash, take the next customer. But, um, honestly, like, when he slammed that orange juice down, I could feel my face getting, like, red with anger. And I had to control myself from flipping out on him because that was just childish. For that. This guy was, he had to be at least, at least maybe 50 or 60. And I'm like, this guy's acting like that at his age? And it was just like, I understand this is retail shit like this is going to happen, but they, they don't pay me enough for that shit, man. Come on. I shouldn't have to deal with that. No, no person in retail should have to deal with someone who's actually going to, like, make a physical scene. Like, you know, he didn't hit me. He didn't, like, throw anything. But, like, just some of the things you see in retail are very disturbing. This is why I really don't like being a cashier there because I'm not a cashier. Let me point that out. I work in hard lines. For those of you that, know, that don't know, um, hard lines, there's soft lines and hard lines in retail. Soft lines are basically a general rule of thumb is anything that's soft, like clothes, shoes, and hard lines is anything that's hard, something physical like appliances, uh, tools, uh, I don't know, microwaves or whatever, um, so, some food items, uh, um, yeah, it's just basic toys, uh, electronics, etc. So, um, yeah, I'm a hard lines associate. There is no reason why I'm spending the majority of my time working there as a cashier. I mean, ideally, if there was a pay difference, and let's say being a cashier was a higher pay than being a hard lines associate, I would I would definitely tell them, you know, since I'm spending so much time as cashier, why don't you, you know, just change my job title to be a cashier so I can make more money. They're all minimum wage. So, um, this just bothers me that I have to deal with this and, like, I don't have to work. Like, I will still survive if I don't work. It's just, um, it's just extra money and something to do. But, uh, yeah, just customers in general and any place in retail, any department store, any of the major big companies, um, people always assume the cashier knows everything about the inventory of the store. So when they say something costs a certain amount of money, they're like, oh, yeah, there was a sign. Why didn't you know that? Uh, like the typical cashier will respond with, you know, let me get a price check for you or something. But what we're thinking is this, we're thinking I'm at the front of the store where the exit is. You're asking me about an item within the store. Do I look like I'm moving myself there to there instantaneously? Like, do I have a photographic memory where I can memorize all the prices and all the tags? Uh, that, that's, that's my rant about retail customers being out of line um i don't know we'll see, we'll see uh like i wouldn't say i have retail burnout yet but i'm sure it happened eventually it happens to the best of us um it's just whether we keep the jobs or not it is entirely up to sometimes forces beyond our control powers to be uh oh spaghetti videos all right Talk to you guys later. Stay frosty.